please his neighbor for his good to edification. If you got your mighty army this morning, let me mention something. If you want mighty army, all you got to do is tell me or tell uh, Jeannie or Don or, or tell one of the deacons or something. They'll get it to me. I just need your phone number and I won't be calling you, but you will, get a, you will be getting a, a message every morning. And uh, this morning's was, you don't have to have a right time to help somebody. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be a special reason to help somebody. Just help them. Amen? And, and it works out good with this. Also, if you're not on the Ever Christian Church text list, this is an entirely different thing. It's not the same thing. Mighty Army is one thing. This is something different. Whenever there's something going on in the church or there's prayer requests needed, you will get this text. This is every Christian church text. And you will find out things that's going on in the church, whether it be events or whether it be prayer requests. But you've got to uh, tell uh, Hazel, or you're one of them, tell, tell Hazel, tell Sister Hazel, or again, you can tell Sister Jenny, one of those two. And, and they'll get you on this this. Uh, text list, and I would I would advise you to get on both of them. One's uplifting, and the other keeps you informed, and and that's something good, especially in a day when used to we get on the telephone and try to call everybody. That's kind of impossible now, you know, with all the things going on, and you know you might can leave a leave a voicemail, maybe not, and then you might not listen to your voicemail. You'd rather have a text. I don't know about y'all, but I really text. I used to hate texts. I think they're great now because it saves a lot of time and effort. You look right down at it. And so it's really cool. So if you want to text, Mighty Army text, encourage your text, talk to me or Jeannie. If you want uh, to get on the text for the church and get the information and know if somebody's in the hospital, know if you're going to be praying for somebody, and you talk to Sister Hazel or Sister Jeannie. Amen? Okay, here we go. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproach thee fell on me. For what sort of things were written aforetime were written for our learning that, that through patience, and a patience is up, patience is actually how you wait. Do you wait, will you wait with a cheerful heart or do you wait with a, with a pitiful heart? He's talking about cheerful endurance and comfort of the scriptures that we might have hope. God is so awesome to us. Amen. So here we go. Let's pray. Father, I love you, Lord. I praise your name. I thank you for your grace and mercy. I thank you for all that you do for us, Lord, and I ask you right now, Lord, to minister to us and through us, God. Make the difference that only you can in our lives. I know, God, that you've got this, all of this stuff. You've got it, Lord. You're working in our, in our midst. You're making differences in our lives. And I'm looking for what you can do in our lives. This day, God, help us see your word like we have not ever seen it before. And we thank you for it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And we love you. The church said... Amen. 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 You can be seated on the way down. Look at somebody and tell them the past is behind us. The future is ahead of us. God is with us. And nothing, and nothing, and nothing shall be impossible. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, just, just to kind of brief, I'm not going to do like I did last time. Last time I got here and stayed here, I'm just going to breeze through this now. But, but one of the biggest problems in the world today is fear. And fear is a is a, is actually fear is is, a, is an epidemic level in so many lives. It's amazing how people are living in fear. If you you can go somewhere now and go in a fast food restaurant or go somewhere and, and a loud noise is made and you have to start seeing people start ducking or just start looking around because they know now there's no, there's always a chance that somebody's going to come in and shoot shoot up something a disgruntled employee or or something's going to happen or or a terrorist might have a bomb explode somewhere so so uh, I, I, again I ask God to show me a, an acrostic for fear and of course here it is fear fervently erodes all your rest fervently erodes now erodes means just takes away actually but it, but fervently erodes means a little bit at a time. But because I put fervently in there, it erodes at a quicker pace. The more fear you have in your heart, the quicker your rest goes away. And it's very important. I don't know about you, but I need rest. Don't you? We need God to help us do all that we're going through. So, so again, uh, Jesus warned that in his last days that men's heart be filled with for fear. And if fear is allowed to persist, it becomes depression. And there's a whole lot of depressed people. There's, there, there's people that, are, that are, are, de are depressed chronically. I mean, that's all there. They're all the time depressed. There's, there's people there that, that just get depressed periodically. There, there's clinical depression. There's all kinds of depression, all kinds of ways to put it. But still, people get down. And when they get down, 
it seems like it's hard to get back up because there's so much beating on you to keep you down. And so, so I, I've noticed that there's a, 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 a many people have more downs than they have ups, okay? And I'm going to tell you something. If you're a down-in-the-mouth Christian, you're not going to win anybody to the Lord. Amen? Amen. If all you're talking about how bad you got it, how bad you got it, I do not want a shoe salesman coming to me going, oh, oh my feet are killing me. Would you like to buy a pair of these? <laughs> And so if we walk around, we walk around with more downs than ups. If we're not careful, if we got, if we let it come out of our mouth constantly, what happens is instead of winning people to Christ, we will actually turn them away from them. Amen. Amen. So, 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 look at somebody and say, you need to get excited about being saved. Get Just somebody that ready. So here it is. We we, we started on last time. We're going to go through it quickly, and I do mean quickly. I don't know how I, I can't describe quickly though. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. God's got seven downs that we can have up. Say amen. So real quick, real, real quick. Oh, I love that picture. That picture right there is amazing to me. I can imagine, I can imagine looking up in the clouds and seeing God reach down like that. That is just so, so amazing. So, so again, uh, Psalm 14, 2 and 3, the Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see that they were, see that, that, that were any that did understand and seek God, and they were all gone aside, they were all together become filthy, there is none that doeth good, no, not one. If you look in the book of Romans, you'll see that again. Uh, uh, our righteousness, and we don't have any righteousness, amen? So watch this. He saw the depravity of fallen man, he saw that death stopped and and, and plague God's people and he saw the destiny that awaits uh, the lost souls. So watch this. The first down is God looked down. Aren't you glad that God looked down on you? Amen. I'm so glad. You know, there was people that were afraid to follow me. There were people that were afraid to get around me. When Before I got saved, I literally would make a sailor blush. It was, I, mean, I saw it happen. I'd make sailors blush and, and at work there was people that would get up from my table and go somewhere else and I'd start talking because that's how filthy my mouth had gotten and I was, I was just, it got really, really down. And I'm glad that when I was that way, while everybody else was trying to move away from me, God moved closer. Amen? He said, you ain't scaring me. You don't scare me at all. Amen? He said, watch this. Look, look. He looked down because I was not looking up. Amen? How many was looking up when Jesus found you? I guarantee you none of you were. Amen? To start with, you were looking any other way but up. Amen? God looked down. Y'all say the Lord looked down. Down number one, God looked down. Down number two, get ready. I love that. You cannot have the cross without having the manger. They're all connected together. So here we go. <coughs> John 3, 31 and 32. He that cometh from above is above all, and he that is of the earth is earthly, and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. And what he hath seen and heard that he testified, no man received, his testimony. Amen. So watch this. Christ came to reveal God's love and reveal God's purpose. He came to reaffirm God's laws and his precepts. But the biggest thing is he came to redeem God's lost people. So now the second down. Get ready. The Lord came down. Somebody say the Lord came down. The Lord came down. The reason the Lord came down is because we couldn't go up. Amen. No matter how hard we try through religion, no matter how hard we try through our mind, no matter how hard we try, any way you look about it, slice it and dice it, I can't get to heaven without God's help. Amen? Amen? I can't even live a good life without God's help. I can't even have a good attitude That's right. without God's help. So I, I thank God not only did he look down, number one, he came down and he said, I'm going to do something about David Linton. Amen? Praise God. My mama said, son, I'm not even one of you. And I pray every day that God takes that mole and tears it up. She said, if your brothers had to come out like you, I'd have sent them back. <laughs> I don't know how you do that. <laughs> Amen. So, so, so. But before she, before she dies, she says, son, I'm so glad you're here. I love you being here. But a lot of times I kept hearing We'll get a little, we'll get a little. Okay, great. So, so, so here's the first. The Lord came down. But not only did the Lord came down, look, he cried it is finished. I, I love this. When he cried it's finished on the cross, that means literally it's paid for. It's paid for. Some of y'all in here, listen to me. The reason that you're down is because you're trying to pay 
for things in the past that you did and you never ever pay for it. Christ already paid for it for you. Quit trying to pay for something you did in the past and let take on and hold on to what God did for you. Amen? <clears throat> 1 John 3, 16, the Amplified says, But this we come to know progressively to recognize and to perceive and to understand the essential love that He laid down His own life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for those who, who are our brothers in Him. So watch this. I love this. He stayed on the cross. He could have come off of it. He stayed on the cross. He sacrificed His life as a lamb. <clears throat> He satisfied God's demands for salvation. <coughs> the Creator allowed the creation to kill Him. Can I say that loud enough? The Creator allowed the creation to kill Him in order that the creation could get to the Creator. Why? Wow. One more time. The Creator allowed the creation to kill him in order that the creation can get to the Creator. <coughs> so here it goes again. The third one. The Lord laid down. Y'all say laid down. Lay down. The Lord laid down. Praise God. We're getting close. I love this one. Now, now I might to stop here and park for just a minute, okay? Do you know that there's a, about 28 major theories and thousands of theses written on what Jesus did between the cross and the resurrection? There's all kinds of stuff written. <coughs> Excuse me. I think the, <coughs> that hospital living is getting to me. <coughs> okay. Watch this. It says... Christ suffered for our sins once for all time. He never sinned, but he died for sinners to bring you safely home to God. He suffered physical death, but he was raised to life in the Spirit. So he went and preached to the spirits in prison. <clears throat> now again, you may have your own theory, and that's fine. I'm not going to argue with you about your theories, because that's fine, because it is a theory, because the only thing I can go by, and I'm not going to go by my theory, I'm going to go by what the Word of God says. If you go by what the Word of God says, then forget the theories. So I see it. The Bible said when he died, he went into hell and he preached to the captives. Number one, he preached to the captives. Now what captives did he preach to? Listen carefully. Before Jesus died, before the blood was shed, Remember, when Jesus came out of the tomb, he told Mary when she first saw him, Do not touch me. I have not ascended to my Father yet. Then later on that day, he said, Everybody touch him and feel all the scars and all this. What happened was, <clears throat> the heavenly priest, or excuse me, the, the high priest on the Day of Atonement, once he had the blood of the Lamb, he could not be touched by anybody until he had put the blood on the mercy seat. Once he put the blood on the mercy seat, then he could be touched. Jesus, when he rose from the dead and he saw Mary. He had not gone to the heavenly of heavenlies yet and to the heavenly mercy seat. And he took the blood, our blood, or his blood that he shed for us, he took it and he went to the heavenly mercy seat and he put the blood on the heavenly mercy seat. Of course, God accepted it. And then he came back and then he said, now you can touch me because now I have, I, have, I have taken the blood and put it on the mercy seat, the blood of the sacrificial lamb. Why he's in, he in hell... <clears throat> Before Jesus died, no matter who you were when you died, whether you were a believer or a non-believer, don't throw any rocks yet because let me finish it. Before Jesus resurrected, whenever somebody died, good or bad, they all went to hell. Let me explain it. Hell had a division in it. It had a great gulf in it. The rich man Lazarus tells us about that, that great gulf. The top was Abraham's bosom. <clears throat> it was a place of safety, comfort, and hope. Below was hell, the abode of the dead, and it was dry, and it was hurting, and it was heat, and there was all kinds of uh, stuff going on down there, the sulfur in that part. There was a great gulf in between. 
And so when the when the rich man wound up in hell, he he said, told Jesus, he said, just just send Father Abraham, Father Ham, Abraham, just uh, told Father Abraham, just send Lazarus down here with a, just some water on the tip of his finger to touch my tongue to cool it. He said, there's a great gulf between us. He said, in, in life, you had the good things, he had the bad. Now he's got the good things, you've got the bad. And so that great gulf was there. Now, now, that's because nobody can go to heaven yet because the price had not been paid. But just but look, but if you were a believer, you didn't go to hell and suffer, you went to Abraham's bosom. It was a place of comfort. But if you did not believe, you had not followed the law, and had not followed the stuff that was going on, the Old Testament saints looked forward to the cross. We look backwards to the cross. And so, so, so <clears throat> if you did, if you died without faith, then you wound up in the bottom, Sheol. It was called Upper Sheol, Lower Sheol. So, Upper Sheol was a place of comfort. Lower Sheol was Hades, the abode of the dead. So, when Jesus died, he went into hell and he preached to both of them. He preached to those in Upper Sheol and said, I'm the one y'all were believing for all this time. I'm here. See, I'm alive. I came just like I said. <coughs> Lower Sheol, he looked at him and said the same thing. I was the one you should have been believing in. I was the one you should have been looking forward to. So what happened is the Bible says that he led captivity captive. Meaning he took those in upper Sheol and he carried them to heaven with him. <clears throat> That's now we, when we die, we go before the Father and we go into a heavenly presence because of Calvary. The Bible says in Isaiah that hell hath enlarged itself. Meaning that upper Sheol was gone. Now it's nothing but lower Sheol, Hades, hell. And so, so Jesus is down there. <coughs> And he's preaching to the captives. But I like this too. How many remember on the cross there was two slaves? Oh, two slaves and two, two thieves. Excuse me. Two, two thieves. And what was pretty, the, th pretty fascinating to think about is Jesus was one R, redemption. One thief was one R, rejection. Amen? And then there was one over here that was asking God, look, look, there was, there, was, there was redemption, there was repentance, and there was rejection. It was a perfect picture of what happens daily in people's lives. The one that rejected, he died and he went to Hades in the lower Sheol. But the one that accepted Jesus, he said, today thou shalt be me where? Did he say heaven? What did he say? Paradise. Paradise is upper Sheol. Paradise is Abraham's bosom. <clears throat> so, so, I don't know how to think about it this way. <coughs> Praise God. Brandon, come here, bro. Come here, Brandon. Uh, I know the woman I have is the devil. Ain't going to be the devil today. But if you'd rather be the devil, we can figure something out. So, watch this. Can you imagine hell that day? Because let me tell you something, if you look at the Bible, you'll see that what Jesus did on the cross actually was a great mystery. It was a mystery to everybody. Because the apostles were thinking that he was going to live and, and open up a kingdom on this earth. Religion thought he was going to set up, a, set up a kingdom on this earth. The devil was just trying to stop him. So everybody, to everybody, including the devil, it was a great mystery. Because the Bible says if they had known what they were doing, they would have never crucified him. And if the devil had done what he was doing, the devil would have done something different. So the devil's in hell. He's doing his stuff. He's got these guys captive. And I don't think there was a knock on the door. I think Clint Eastwood may have got this from him. I can see Jesus now kicking down the gates of hell. The only thing kicked down the gates of hell is he's walking down the corridors of hell. He's not walking by himself. He's walking arm in arm with the guy that just said, Father, Father, remember me when you get to your kingdom. And he said, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Can you imagine Jesus walking down the corridors of hell just like this? He's got the thief with him who just a few hours before had no hope in his life. Praise God, he got crucified at that time. And the most powerful thing of all is they walk up to the devil and they look at him and he says, Give him over. Give him to me now. Give me the keys to hell and death. You don't have them anymore. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? 
<laughs> you can go sit down. So he's got the keys of hell and death. It's a very powerful thing. So he preaches to the captains. He leads them into heaven. Amen. That's pretty cool. But, but also, he, he puts the devil in his place. And then he takes the keys. He pushes away the fear of death. I am no longer afraid of death. Just yesterday, just yesterday, Becky looked at me because they were trying to figure out what all this was. And they, were, they really had us kind of, had our nerves kind of rattled as they were going through trying to figure out how to give her the right stuff. And she was rejecting some things and some things were messing her up and all this stuff's going on. And she looks at me and she says, first she says, God's got this. And then she looks at me and she says, hold it, Dad. Either way, I win. I said, it's just amazing. It just blew me away. Either way, Dad, I mean, God's got this. Look, she said, I don't have fear of death because I know what's going to wait me on the other side. So look, look. So, so watch this. Once he was taken down off the cross, we saw him taken off, or we didn't, but they saw him taken off the cross and put in a tomb. But in spirit, he went down into hell. He carried the one that repented, the thief that repented, went down there. He busted down the gates of hell. He led captive. He preached to all of them and said, look, here's what you didn't believe in me. That's why you're here. You didn't believe in me. I've come to get you. And then he put the devil in his place. He took away his keys. Amen. You know, I, I, I heard somebody say one time, you know, the devil walks here where he goes. I said, how do you say that? He said, because Jesus took his keys. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. And so, 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 he finished. So here's, here, here's the, here it is. The Lord went down. He went all the way down into hell or to hell to finish the job. Wow. He finished the job. Now watch this. I'm almost through. I said almost. All right, right. That's right. I need to start saying I'm closing yet. I got five of those. Keep up with those people. Yeah, we got All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Here it goes. So, uh, God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spoke in times past to the, father, by, to the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory, and expects the image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by, uh, when he had by himself purged our sins, he sat down. Y'all say sat down. Sat down. He sat down on the right hand of majesty on high. What has that got to do with anything? He sat down by the Father. That kind of sounds like he was tired. No. No. Get ready. Here it goes. Wherefore, seeing we're all something passed about with so great cloud of witnesses that it's lay aside every way, and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider here that it deserves such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be weary and faint in your minds. Now watch, I love this. I love it. Here we go. He finished the work of redemption. <clears throat> if you went into the temple, if you went to the tabernacle, or you went into the temple, there's one out of all the nice furniture and all the gold inlay stuff and all the, the, the absolute awesome things, the, the lampstand and all this stuff, and the altar. There's one thing you would never see in the tabernacle, and that's a chair. The reason there's not a chair in the tabernacle is because the priest never had time to sit down. They were constantly, constantly, people were coming up and they were in line. In line. They lined up and waited for sacrifices for their sin and for whatever they had done and, and also to, for the birth of their children. There's all kinds of things they would offer sacrifices for. And the priests never had a chance to sit down. They were always so busy, all they could do was offer sacrifices. But Jesus, he finished the work of redemption. He fulfilled all the types. He fulfilled all the shadows. He, 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 he furnishes the believer with power to serve. You know why? Here it is. Because the Lord sat down. Amen? The reason he sat down is he says, look, 
The other guys couldn't sit down because they were always having to offer sacrifices because the Bible says the blood of bulls and goats were not able to take away sin. They only really covered sin. Amen. But when Jesus came, John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. It's not powered up. It's taken away. It's done away with. Some of us in here right now, the reason that you're having so much difficulty is because you keep piling on. It's time to quit piling it on. It's time to trust God. He don't want to pile it on anymore. He wants to take it away. Praise the Lamb of God. I don't have to hide my past. I don't have to keep being beat up by my past. I don't have to have the devil keep reminding me of my past. Piling on top, on top, on top, on top. And I'm carrying that heavy burden. Jesus took it away. Praise the Lamb of God. He sat down. Glory to the Lamb of God. Now we are, we are almost through now. How many how many of the downs have we hit so far? What? Not, not, not how many quits, how many downs? Oh. <laughs> well, here we go. <coughs> Matthew, I love that picture. Praise God, I love that picture. Matthew 14, 31 and 33 says, And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and called him, and said unto him, O thou little faith, wherefore do thou doubt? And when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. Wow. He, watch this, he lifts you out of, of, of your death into a life eternal. He will lead you out of your defeats into victory. He will loose you from all that prevents you, uh, your devotion to Christ with power and purpose. So watch this. Here's another down. The Lord reaches down. I'm so glad he reaches down to me. Because Lord knows I can't reach up to him. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Let's say one. There's only 15 more down. No, there's two more down. <laughs> and I'm closing. <coughs> two, okay. Here we go. BJ, get ready when I get to that. Down off of this, you can, you can come on down. You know how you get down off of, down off of elephant? You don't, you get down off the duck. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Here we are. Uh, awesome. Absolutely awesome picture. We're getting ready to see that one day. Here it goes. First Thessalonians 4, 13 through 16. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brother, concerning them which were asleep or dead that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God, Jesus bring, will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep or those that are dead. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Now, I did have a guy tell me one time, a preacher told me his church was going first. I said, how in the world? You know, your church is going first. Y'all think y'all some kind of religious, extra-religious? He said, no, it's biblical. I said, how are y'all going first? We're all going at the same time. He said, no, the Bible quickly, directly states the dead in Christ shall rise first. My church is going first. <laughs> <laughs> Why do the dead in Christ rise first? This is pretty cool. Because God is a God of order. And because God's going to let all of us get to sit at the same time, in order for us all to get at the same time, the graves are going to burst open. They got six foot to go. They got other places they got to pull back together. So when the dead come back up, by the time they get up to us, we're all changed and we go to be with Jesus. Wow. That's very powerful. Plus, God brings back the souls of the men that died and women died before. Their souls will reach their, their resurrected body and then we'll all become glorified. Isn't it an awesome thing? We're all going to be changed. The uh, corruption will put them in corruption. Praise the name of God. So watch this. Watch this. He comes first to raise the dead saints. Then he raptures the living saints. And then he rewards the faithful saints. And for those that say, well, rapture is not in the Bible. I explained this one time before, but I feel like I need to do it again. The word rapture itself is not in the Bible. No, it's not. But one of the first times the Bible was actually fully translated, it was fully translated in Latin, it was called the Latin Vulgate. Jerome translated it. It was called the Latin Vulgate. That's what the early Catholic Church used especially. They still use it many, many times. So the Bible's in Latin. That's why they pray in Latin and why they 
reading the Word of God in Latin. So you got this Latin. Okay, well, the Bible says in Thessalonians, when it's talking about the rapture, it calls it, they called up, or being called up, or being catched away. Called up, catched away, or called away, however you want to say that. But when you look it up, called away, or catching up, called away, in the Latin Vulgate, when you take it and translate called up in Latin, it's rapio. It's where we get the word rapture. So that's where the word rapture comes from. It is the, it is the actual uh, 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 Latin word for being called up. So, so it is in the Bible. It just depends on what translation <laughs> that you look at. So, so here we go. Raise the dead saints, rapture the living saints, and then we're going to start seeing some rewards. Isn't that going to be cool when we get rewarded at the marriage supper of the Lamb? So I see this. The Lord is coming down. Y'all say coming down. Coming down. And then there's one more. There's one more, and I'm closing. Where'd BJ go? I didn't even get ready. There you go. Three times. I can close two more times, right? All right. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 2. Look at this. Trust me. I have everything under control. Jesus. Trust me, I got everything under control. You know, I sit and watch my kids, and they'd be all worried about what we're going to do here and there. And I'd already seen, I already knew they had the problem, and I'd already taken care of it. Many times, I'd already had the solution, already paid for it, it was ready to go, but I hadn't told them yet. And so they're, they're having a hard time because they're thinking that it's not being taken care of. And I said, does your father ever let you go without? Doesn't your father take care of you all the time? Yes, Dad, but I think you blew it this time. No, I didn't. Look. <laughs> same way. You may not see what God has for you. You may not have it all figured out yet. How, how, how many here has got it all figured out? Raise your hand. The only thing I got all figured out is I don't know what's going to happen next. Amen. Amen? Trust me. I have everything under control. So get ready. Get ready. Here it goes. Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownest him with glory and honor, and then set him over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet, for he that put all the subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. Now, But now we see not all things put. So watch this. That's kind of a fancy way of saying what this is. Under him, first he places Satan. During this time of the rapture, he puts him in after, after seven years. After seven years of Satan running loose, he goes in the bottomless pit. Remember the day of the Lord, the rapture. The rapture is the beginning of the day of the Lord. The second coming is the ending of the day of the Lord of seven years. So in that seven year period, Satan's got free reign. But at the end of that seven years, Satan's going in the bottomless pit for a thousand years. So first, Satan's in the bottomless pit. This is the one I really hate, but I had to put it in here. Because if I didn't put it in here, I wouldn't be preaching the whole gospel. He'll place those that are separated from him. I didn't know how to even put it. I had no idea how to place this. Those that are separated from him, he can put them in their rightful place. And that's sad. Somebody says, well... The reason I put rightful place is because it's the place they chose because God predestined. When I say predestined, that doesn't mean he decided who's going to heaven and who's going to hell. He predestined for every man because of the cross. He predestined for every man to have an ability to go to heaven or to go to hell. That's up to you, not up to him. He's already said here, the doors are open wide. You've got to walk through it. And so, so those that have, have separated themselves from him totally just pushed their way away from him, they just said, I don't want anything to do with him, then that's their cho it should have been chosen place. That's their chosen place because if they don't have anything to do with God, the Bible says if you draw close to God, he does what? Draw close to you. He's a gentleman. He doesn't force himself on you. Satan will. And so if you live life, the Bible says, watch this. The Bible says you can blaspheme the Father, you can blaspheme the Son, but if you blaspheme the Holy Ghost, you will not be forgiven you in this life or in the next life coming. What's it talking about? If you reject, if you reject the calling of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit drawing you to God, moving you to God, and telling you you need to be saved, you need to give God your life, you need to, to, to give this to God. If you reject God's 
call him through the Holy Spirit to be saved. If you reject that, you can talk about God, you can talk about Jesus, but if you, if you reject the Holy Spirit wooing you into salvation, then it's not going to be forgiven in this life or the next. And that's sad, but it's true. And then, the saints, ah, we're going to the glorious paradise. It's so amazing. You know, I just, I'm blown away at this cancer center in Greenville. It just blows me away how great it is, how best, how it looks so great. Everything's right there at your fingertips. I mean, it's just, it's been amazing. I, everything's all under one roof. It's been awesome. And, and every time I go in there, I thank God for that place and thank God for those doctors because, because they just get around Bethany and treat her so good and, 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 and all these nurses. It's been amazing. And Bethany said, Dad, I really like this place. And I said, Bethany, I'm glad you do because you were having to spend so much time here. So with that, I can't think of a better place to be. This is awesome. And, and, and I think about how great that is. I can't even imagine. With everything right there that you need, that your fingertips. Can you imagine being in heaven? And everything you need at your fingertips? Wow. Never growing old. Everybody's going to be, everybody's going to be like a bunch of spry teenagers running around. Then it's going to be awesome. That's awesome. Not going to be a gray hair. Amen. The guy told me, he, Linda ordered something, some drive through or something. Somebody brought some delivery to us the other day. And he said, look for the big guy in the big black shirt. And I said, he said, now who am I looking for? I said, a tall big guy with a bunch of white hair. He said, you were really easy to pick out that crowd. I said, I thought so. This awesome hair job I got is not going to be in him. <laughs> I had the same barber. <laughs> I had the same barber. That reminds me, there was this guy. There was this guy. Uh, his name was Bobby. And Bobby was always optimistic. He was so, so optimistic. And so Bobby says, he goes to his barber and he says, I need a good haircut. He says, What's going on? Nosy. He had a nosy barber who had a very bad attitude. He looked at his barber and he said, I, he says, where are you going? Someplace special you got to have at the works? He says, yeah, I'm going to go see the Pope. He says, you can't go see the Pope. He's got all these guards around him. Do you have a special appointment? He says, I don't have a special appointment, but I'm going to go see the Pope. I'm going to Rome, leaving tomorrow. He says, so you haven't even called him yet? You don't even know what's going on? He don't know who you are? He's going to have all those guards around him? He's not going to let you up. And he went on and on and on about how crazy this guy was. Bobby tried to get up to see the Pope. He said, just cut my hair. I'll take care of this. So he got to cut his hair. And he said, I'll come back to you when I get back. So the following week he comes back. He comes back and he says, well, I bet you saw, I bet you didn't see the Pope, did you? He said, as a matter of fact, I did. He said, you did? He said, yeah, I saw the Pope. He said, come on now, there ain't no way you saw the Pope. He said, yeah. He said, I was in the Vatican yard. I'm out there in that courtyard. And there's thousands of people. And the Pope. Like God was guiding me. Looked down and found me amongst all those people and pointed me out and sent the guards down for me. He said, oh, come on, but they didn't do all this. Yeah, they did. He sent the guards down, they come and got me, and they pulled me into his presence. He said, oh, that ain't going to happen. Ain't no way. You're just a little peon. He said, no. He pulled me up, and I stood up on the platform with him. He said, really? And he said, he said and he, then he spoke to me. He says, yeah, what did he say? He said, look at me. He said, son, who gave you that sorry haircut? <laughs> <laughs> and finally, y'all said they say the Lord will put down. The Lord will put down. The Lord will put down. He'll put down Satan. So look, I want y'all to remember. Come on up here, BJ. I want you to remember. Whenever you're down, you remember. God got down for you. It's amazing. He looked down. He came down. He stayed down. He, he, he went down under. He just, I mean, he said, any way you turn, God had it covered. God had it covered. It's so important. It is so important that we trust God in these things that we go through. Everybody stand up. 
Stand up and bow your head. Close your eyes. I'm going to ask you why. Everybody's got your head bowed. Everybody, nobody's looking around. I'm just asking. I want you to put your hand up quickly. You don't have to keep it up. But if you're here today, and you've been fighting down all the downs, you've been fighting all these downs in your own life. And instead of focusing on your downs that are negative, you may need some help, but you need to start focusing on the downs that are positive, what Jesus did. They're all positive. Nobody looking around. <clears throat> and when I tell you, I want you to slide it up real quick. You've been focusing on the negative downs in your life, and you're needing to learn how and to see how to focus on the positive downs that God did for you. But just put up that hand and say, Pray for me. Put that hand up just quickly. Pray for me. I need to see the positive downs that Jesus did, not the negative downs that are in my life consuming me. Give them strength. Give them divine focus <laughs> to look at the positive downs that you did in our lives. To help us to get up. Lord, I love you. I praise your name. And I thank you for touching everybody that had their hand raised. Someone to raise it didn't. I ask you to bless them right now. To help them hold on just a little bit longer. Because when you're doing something in their life, but they're just holding on. It's amazing what will happen when they see the sun come up again. Maybe you're here today and you just need God to do something special for you. You need God to touch you in such a way that you'll know that it's God, nobody else. And you need God to do something in your life that will amaze you and those around you when God does it. Right now, the altars are open. Give a need from God, come on up here. Give a need from God, you come on up here. Talk to me. I know it's not the Lord. That's okay. Don't let that stop you. You have a need from God, come and pray. Come and pray. You need something God to touch somebody else that you know. Come and pray. <laughs> Don't let this day go by without praying. God, help us to focus on your positive downs so that we won't get caught up in our own negative downs. Help us, God. Show us. Enlighten us. Use us. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for breakthrough.
really, really fighting doubt. They're really fighting doubt in their life. They're doubting God. They're doubting themselves. They're doubting what's happening in their life. They're doubting it all. And they're wondering if God's going to come through. So, either next week or the week after, I'm not sure. Because I'm trying to be led by the Spirit very strong on this. Almost the end of the day. We're going to talk about how to deal with your doubt. So, in the next week, we're going to talk about seven ups. We're going to talk about doubt, one or the other. But, but come on and expect God to do something strong in your life. Not just great, strong in your life. Don't forget when you walk out to, to, to give Samantha a hug and tell her, how do y'all say that? Hoorah. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Simplify. You don't simplify. I know you don't simplify. It means always faithful. Always faithful. That's awesome. That is so, so awesome. Simplify Urah. Amen. And look over our two new deacons go, Simplify Urah. <laughs> Amen. God is awesome. Brother Baby, dismiss us in prayer, please. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings you provided for us today. Lord, as we go forth, let us take those blessings and share them with others so all will love your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah.